Thanks. You know how we're really interested in supplements, particularly at this time of year when everybody's talking about pumpkins. That's why we're jumping on Zoom now to talk to Alex Taylor Grout about Fettel's pumpkin powder and a whole lot more. I'm Anna Webb. Welcome to A Dog's Life. Alex Taylor Grout, welcome to A Dog's Life. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me. Oh, well, thanks, though, for coming on, because obviously this is our Halloween episode airing, um, I know, on the 2nd of November. But Halloween still remains, really, I think, along with other things like Bonfire Night and so on through till the end of January, in a way. Yeah. Or all year round in our case, because we have pumpkin. (laughs) Well, exactly. And that's really what I'm intrigued um, to talk to you about, because way back, way back when pumpkin hit the map as being um, a superfood for for dogs. Us blighties in England, we couldn't really get pumpkin because Halloween hadn't quite taken off as it has now compared to America. So every kind of September, October, November, it was great because, you know, people like me would would stock up on (laughs) a can of pumpkin, uh, pureed pumpkin that's an American brand that would be on sale along the cake mixture, um, cake baking aisle of your supermarket. Um, And then you'd have these cans (laughs) to last, you know, um, because you'd open a can and then if you didn't use the whole thing, you could pop it into ice cube tray and freeze it and pop it out when you needed to but you know all this has changed quite recently and indeed fettle has brought um what i've heard is rather a good dehydrated form of pumpkin to market quite right there we are so <laughs> long yes. intro alex there sorry oh well, no not, not at all i'm just i think so it probably makes sense for to, to dive into the, the our background and ethos behind absolutely how, how how we started um which again we've we've just had our first birthday so as a company we are we are very new still um right. and I'll I'll run you through kind of our our ethos and and how pumpkin made its way into our, yeah and our, the our, name our oh go on Alex and the, the name, name. And the, and because the name. I got the name straight away because I've seen you on Instagram and I love yeah. your posts and obviously you very know kind. you're ticking a lot of my boxes as Good. being you know natural and interested in pumpkin already you know what I mean but fettle it's a word I'd not really thought of for ages probably since I last read a Dickens novel which was when I think, <laughs> yes. you know, like my A-level English so I mean in fine fettle young man quite right quite right so explain and everything I, <laughs> I would I would love to take all the credit for the name but unfortunately like everything these ideas come from other people. And in fact, this comes from my business partner's uh, other half who said, actually, you know what? Fettel. Fettel seems right and sounds right. And after, as soon as she said the word, immediately it was a yes, because just like you, it's we see it as a state of fine fettel. So for us, it simply means in good health. So the ethos behind Fettel um, pretty much came about after I got my first dog, uh, Winnie, who is a lovely, spontaneous, full of energy working Cocker Spaniel that is also a redhead. And my other half is also a redhead. So yeah. the two together, uh, you can imagine, is absolute chaos. So we got her in April last year. And I, I as a human, <laughs> I take my health very very seriously i always have from growing up in the countryside and i like to understand what i'm eating i like to exercise i like to enjoy the great outdoors all the good stuff the simple things in life which my dad and mum would always tell me growing up so as soon as we got winnie it was almost i fell into this uh, this world of um overwhelm in terms of your you you read I, i read so much information around how how to feed your dog, uh, what's best for your dog, you know, diet, nutrition plans. And when we got Winnie from the breeder, we could see their dogs were really well looked after, you know, uh, they, they went on shoots, very well kept, working dogs. And we thought, oh, okay, brilliant. And I'm I'm not going to use this podcast at all to, to slay any form of, um, of feeding or diet or nutrition, because I don't think that's the right way to approach nutrition in itself. I just have my own personal views, which is what we bring into Fettel. So she was fed uh, and, and brought up on, on kibble. And so immediately I was down the rabbit hole of, oh, okay, kibble must be the thing. Let's have a look at all these kibble brands. And 
just personally for me, I, I just don't agree with the, the, the process behind, let's say, not necessarily dry food, but, but kibble in general. So it, it just became a very apparent that there were these two, two tribes almost of you either feed kibble or you feed raw. And there's no in between. You're not allowed to have an opinion in between. And this almost just, just sparked up a whole new avenue, I think, for, for both Taylor and I, who Taylor, again, is uh, his life is very much pet. He has, I think, four dogs. He's got two cats. He's got hens. So both of our lives pretty much have always been pet, <laughs> especially for me since, since April and having Winnie. And this led us down a, a, a path, I think, of Firstly, we've, we've been friends for a couple of years. Secondly, we, we love animals in general. Um, I, I, I worked on a farm. My very first job when I was 13 was working on a farm. Um, and I've always, I've always loved animals. So we just looked at the industry and went that something can be done better here. And fettle isn't about almost curing problems. It's more about building a habit and a routine for good nutrition. So preventation rather than curing, which which led us down to, I think, just, just one whole food, human grade ingredients. And I'll, I'll talk a bit later on about what's coming later. And we're actually moving away from just one ingredient and moving into our first blend, which is, is really exciting, which I'll talk about a bit later. Um, so our very first product was goat's milk because what i noticed when we first got winnie was actually she wasn't she wasn't drinking enough and for humans hydration is one of the most important parts of a healthy um a healthy lifestyle just like sleep and just by just the same as um looking after your gut and your gut microbiome so goat's milk was kind of the first introduction just based on minerals the protein the 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 strength that it can provide for recovery and just general um, absorption of nutrients to help the body do what it needs to do, especially for getting liquids into Winnie. Um, and that that became a, a great hit. Um, and again, that was our kind of flagship and still is our, our flagship product. It's very simple to understand one ingredient um, and the whole brand of Fettel, for, which I'm, I'm sure you've probably seen, is just a kind of mimic Taylor and I's ethos around countryside simple living which is which is what we wanted the packaging to look like and the whole brand no it's um, brilliant Alex I mean absolutely brilliant I mean you know goat's milk is a novel protein um it does have nutrients in there that uh, cow's milk arguably doesn't obviously it's not over farmed goats aren't over farmed so yep. you've got all of that aspect and that's that's so important I mean that is so important when I qualified as a canine nutritionist back in 2015 it was you know all about sheep's milk or goat's milk rather yep. than cow you know but of course you know because it, it's so over farmed Farmed is is really the main the main reason, and of course, yes. many cows aren't grass fed. You know, which yeah. is utterly nuts. Isn't it, it is, Bonkers. especially in twenty twenty four. Well, yeah, exactly. We all know what happened. You know, when you didn't do that, and there was this thing dreadful called mad cows disease. You know, yeah. which were you know that that's extraordinary. So yeah, no, you know, I noticed your goat's milk because yeah, I think I I'm pretty sure fettel were the first to really yeah. bring goat's milk to the fore you know in in again you know this powdered format um yeah. which you know i think for a lot of things providing all the nutrients are in the powder yeah. you know and then re um you know hydrating it yeah 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 yeah, yeah. It's, it's great for space saving you know a lot of dogs now you know live in apartments you know um it, it's mixed now as dogs have Exa become exactly so popular in the last few years you know compared to 20 years ago I and mean, the difference is is nuts and agreed and, you know so it's a space thing you know again you talk about kibble and raw you, know, you can see why some people you know veer to the the dehydrated type exactly of food Ease. because of space a lot of yeah. people only have a little freezer that's in your fridge you know I mean I'm lucky I've got a whole freezer in my shed dedicated <laughs> to the dogs you know yes. so that it's not a problem but I'm not normal particularly in a in in London in the metropolis you yeah know? so was that part of your thinking with this well it was it, it more so came about from a from a fact of we, we like to do activities, we like to go out and about, and it was more a case of space to one extent. I mean, so it probably gives a more of an idea if I give some context behind how, how we feed Winnie. So in the mornings, we, we feed her cold press because 
many reasons why we want to keep a dry diet in some format in her in her meal times because if we're on holiday and she's coming with us and we don't have access to raw food or anything like that um it means she's not going to be put off by being given this foreign food that's that's not raw food so having cold press still part of her diet um was great for that that part the the traveling you know, on holiday if people are, are coming in and looking after her and they don't they, they're not comfortable feeding raw she's got the option of, of still having cold press but it's also we like to do training with her so every morning when we're going on a walk or doing something we do some form of enrichment um and having the ability to to do that through cold press was very easy as opposed to having slabs of raw food on your hand doing treats or training so being able to still keep that dry part in her diet um, was very important. And that same kind of ethos came over to um, our powdered formats and dehydrated formats because space, of course, is is very important, especially now when looking at the stats behind even new property developments that are going up and houses or, or people that are viewing houses and apartments now are looking at a spare room for their dogs as opposed to for children. So being able to provide a, a product that's not only nutritionally um, abundant, but also um, in an affordable package and something that doesn't take up space. And there's no waste because you just literally use as much or as little as you need. And it's incredibly versatile. You don't have to add liquid to our powdered supplements. You can add them as toppers. Um, you you know, you can freeze them, you can turn them into gummies. There's, there's all forms of different ways that you can use it. And I think for us, that was important. It was keeping something that I, I hate waste. So not having something that you, once it's opened, you either have to put it in the fridge and use it within five to five to seven days um, or all it, use it all in one innings. So being able to use things and make up as much as or as little as you want, especially, you know, for the goat's milk when we're going on walks, you know, autumnal walks and you want to give you want to give your dog a bit of a, a, a pick me up that's full of protein uh, and give them some some extra energy after a long run. Goat's milk was a fantastic is a, is a fantastic product for for those instances. Definitely. And for a, a lot more, you know, exactly. um, yeah, a good biome, I say a good source of protein, but calcium as well. Exactly. And it's hydrational because, you know, we are 80 percent dogs like us are, I think it is 80 percent water. Yes. So, you know, and the, the sad fact is a lot of, well, it's one in 10 dogs do get some renal problems in their life and cats and I know that you do offer the goat's milk to cats cats are even worse about 80 percent of all cats do die from renal failure and that is well yeah no that's down to I hate to say it dry food keep talking about this cats are so under-resourced at the moment they really um, are they really are so I've only had cats for 14 years as opposed to dogs being more like sort of 59 yeah so, yeah but um you know I've, I they've really honestly captured my heart over this time you've got no idea so and Mike my producer he's probably <laughs> right now we can't see it but if we could he'd be going oh god here, no. here we go <laughs> here we go keep focused Anna the podcast <laughs> is called a dog's life all right <laughs> we can create another one that has cats <laughs> yeah we have it. all right <laughs> so, no, he's probably laughing um I hope so <laughs> yeah so anyway digressing as usual but um really brilliant idea you know um so you know so when you hydrate it up you know, the goat's milk and, of course, you know, the pumpkin. Um, yeah. Are you able then to decant it, you know, into little molds and, you know, bits and pieces to kind of have a batch that you can maybe pop out exactly. and give as treats on the go? Or when it's summer and hot, obviously, that's a great way to cool your dogs down. You know, is that something you can do with it? Yes, exactly. So it's almost the, the same principle applies that once it's rehydrated, it has a shelf life of, let's say, up to five days. Keep it in the fridge, just like you would with almost almost fresh milk straight from the farm. So what we tend to do, especially in the summer, and I know a lot of our customers do, is make up a batch of goat's milk. Um, and then whether or not you want to create ice treat or frozen treats or if you want to make gummies. When, we, when we've done a few shows, actually, recently, um, including Edition Dog, we made gummies. So we just used beef gelatin, unflavored beef gelatin. We reconstituted some of the goat's milk, some of the uh, pumpkin and sea well, seaweed you can't really reconstitute, but you mm. can add it in with goat's milk uh, mm. or any form of liquid and then pour it into the molds with the um, with the beef gelatin to make gummies. So you can make your own DIY gummies, which again are fantastic for enrichment, for training, as a treat. Um, and the, the same for um, the same for frozen treats. So again, 
get your favorite molds out, make up as much as you need in the liquid form, mix them all in together if you want, which is what we do. We, we you know, it's almost a, a goat's milk base and then add in uh, a teaspoon of pumpkin powder, a teaspoon of uh, seaweed, and then pour it into molds in, and then again, serve as a, serve as a, a nutritional treat. Yes, and the, the the big emphasis there on nutritional, you know, how, yes. how amazing. I and mean, this is, you know, so good for our dogs because, you know, the thing is I've been in touch quite a lot with a, a microbiologist um, who's been working with Aboriginal yes. University, yeah, and studying microbiomes for over 14 years, animals, microbiomes, all yep. sorts, you know, from sheep to Which is fascinating. Pigs. It is, oh, crumbs, and it's... um led to, to a bit of a study going on yep. um actually on something else um, you know which is relevant in a way which is because you've just talked about it bone broth you know and yep. and the um results are coming in it's absolutely mind-blowing I mean it's so mind-blowing when they first came in I was like a kid in Hamleys it was like oh jumping around I mean in so much as yeah it certainly is working and this is where good natural species appropriate ingredients yep. you know are so important and of yeah. course you know even if you are feeding your dog on a on a kibble you know by adding some superfoods like your goat's milk and and certainly also we'll talk about the seaweed i'm mad about seaweed as yeah. well it's a way to minimize the negativity of the kibble it, it, really. it is and i think the, the important part for us is you, we can all have our own opinions on what's the right way to feed any of your animals. But I think the more important part of this conversation is, is what can I do to benefit all? And that is adding to an, an existing diet. We're not, ask, because as you, as you all know, asking someone to change their dog or cat or, or horse or anyone's diet is a very, very big ask. Whereas to, to, in, to slowly introduce let's call superfoods and nutritionally correct uh, ingredients into that diet is is arguably almost more important because you're then giving that dog nutrients that it that it needs to to not only survive but also to thrive just like um, you were saying with, with bone broth it doesn't matter if it's if it's kibble if it's raw you're getting not only liquid in which is one of the most important parts of of a diet but it's also giving a very strong backbone to support the gut microbiome, which in itself, as we know as humans, as we know for, for animals, the gut microbiome is, is a second brain. And that that is arguably more important than the actual physical brain itself in, in some instances. And it makes it makes the body tick. Oh, yeah, I know. I agree completely. So it must have been a big journey, though, um, for you and Taylor to get this all together right I mean it must have been I can imagine the excitement and the planning and where is your factory that this all happens because this whole dehydration process I mean I, I'm, I'm very interested in it but yeah you know, we can, can we'll, you we'll... really keep all of the nutrients in so like like anything and we we have many comments um on on adverts or anything else around almost dehydrated goods and the the, the fact of the matter is if you can buy raw straight from the source that will always be the best option so goat's milk for example if you can buy the, the only place that you can buy raw goat's milk is directly from a farm because legally supermarkets aren't allowed to sell it because it has bacteria in and therefore it's a health risk for them and even when you buy it from a farm it'll have a almost a, a warning saying um you know th this has got back live bacteria in and isn't good for you so of course buying direct raw from the source will always be the most nutritionally complete yeah, way to yeah. get something so we, is that we, what you dehydrate so at the moment we dehydrate it um and based over in the netherlands and we're working very closely with two uk farmers um goat, goat milk farmers and our entire supply chain is, is very soon to be changing to um to uk based goat's milk which we are we are incredibly excited about um because I think it's incredibly important to share more about your supply chain, share more about the behind the scenes of what goes in from, you know, going to see our, our farmers and not only touching on helping those farms actually diversify their income, because as we all know, it's an incredibly difficult lifestyle living as a farmer. So being able to actually give back to the UK and, and support local farmers by the addition of different revenue streams for them. But also at the end of the day, we get a, a more superior quality product because at the moment, um, our goat's milk is uh, dehydrated 
uh, through a spray drying process, a gentle spray drying process, unlike supermarkets that use very high temperatures over a very short period of time, which means you lose a lot of the nutrients. Whereas mm. the process that ours goes through, it's at the lowest legal temperatures, which I believe is around 68 degrees oh, over great. a longer over a longer period of time, which means you're, 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 you're controlling and keeping as many of those nutrients in as possible. But of course, you are still losing out on some of those amazing raw benefits if buying direct from a farm. So we kind of sit in the middle and in between um, buying it for those that aren't able to go to go to a farm and buy raw. Yeah, no, no, we're almost we're, we're better than the supermarket. Yeah. Giving, yeah. giving it in a, uh, I guess, more uh, convenient form. Yeah, no, of course, of course. I mean, this is good. And it is great that, you know, you're so aware of the traceability, because I yeah. think that's something that's becoming more and more important, you know, for 100%. as pet parents and, you know, everybody, you know, get get tuned into it all a bit more. But my question would be this, are you able to um, use unpasteurized goat's milk? So yes, you can. And it depends on the heat treatment process that it goes through. So you'll have unpasteurized goat's milk, and then the next part of our process will be freeze drying as opposed to spray drying. So right. freeze drying meaning obviously using very, very low temperatures. So it's you'll you'll you will lose some of the nutrients still from a raw or unpasteurized process. Um so but because if, there's more and I only ask in that um Oh, for many, many years until Brexit happened, yeah. um, I was sourcing colostrum from okay. a Swiss company. I bought colostrum from them. I mean, I still will get some more again. It's just that the last jar I bought at 120 quid got exactly. lost in customs. And that yeah. was like, not great, <laughs> not least because I really needed it for my cat at the time. And, you know, but this colostrum, and I mean, obviously goats make colostrum as well, unbelievably amazing it's it's i it's, mean yeah that's almost I mean, the creme de la creme isn't it yeah i mean but seriously you know i mean yes and and, and it comes obviously at a price you know it and it was all ethically done i mean no harm came to the cows and they were yes. organic cows so i just think you know the more like that you can get Precisely. it may mean a different range of products but yeah but you know certainly someone like myself would go that extra mile financially to get it because i do think the nutrients are more in unpasteurized yes person. agreed oh. and and i think the the important part i think is for us it's trying to make this nutrition as a, as, as readily available to to all so it doesn't matter if you're a billionaire or if you work a nine to five or if you you know you don't have a stable source of income you're, you're able to get a good quality product that you can trust you can see what the supply chain is and it and it's and it fits your morals as a human correctly and you know that you can read the back of the ingredients list that reads like a clear conversation and it doesn't sound like it's made in a lab and i think as long as we can tick those boxes and give the people i think insight and and confidence to trust something that will aid the, the health of their their pets we've, we've done our job there and i think that's that's how our whole ethos just almost moving away from the synthetics and going from uh, what what we're all about is from the land, not a lab, and yeah. the the whole kind of argument from whole foods versus synthetics. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So no, so I'm I'm loving that. I'm loving that. I'm picturing lots of goats um, <laughs> jumping around. They're so naughty. I would love to yeah. have a pygmy goat. It's one yes. of my one of my uh, bucket list things. Actually, I think that so. that will be on our cards at some point. Trying to try try and buy several hundred acres and 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 have our own <laughs> goats. That that's the ultimate goal. I think. Oh, fantastic! Um, well, I'd love to come and visit when you definitely. Are, I do. But listen, talking about the pumpkin because. As I was saying earlier, you know, pump, you never had pumpkins in this country yeah. until relatively recently. Do they grow in England? So they they grow in England, but only certain times of the year. <laughs> so right. we we very much set out when starting this business because we it's such an interesting conversation because romantically creating a British company, we we started off wanting everything to be British, and as much as we'd like to do that. It came down to, to two main variables, actually. Firstly, was was access to high quality product, and secondly, was price was price point. And the fact that you can't buy pumpkin all year round in the UK was was the first Debbie Downer. And then, secondly, you almost look at quality, and because the UK isn't actually set up correctly to grow the finest quality pumpkin or squash or anything of the same uh, family of mm. those products. 
it made sense to look further afield. And all of the all the the partners that we work with all over the world for sourcing, it goes directly to our lab to then quality test each of them to see actually where where they fit. So for us, it's it's a it's a fine balance running a startup because you want to look at you know your green credential credentials. You want to look at your supply chain, but to be honest, that the most important part for us is is quality of, excuse me, quality of ingredient. So, we source our our pumpkin from all over the world, whether it's Asia, whether it's Spain, whether it's other places in Europe, and it just means as a business we get a, a couple of things. Firstly, it's diversification because if there's supply issues in one region which can very easily happen because this is a raw material. And if the weather doesn't behave in certain climates, that could scupper your entire business. So oh, for I us, imagine. It yeah, I mean, that's precisely. Big, yeah. So so being able to to tap into multiple markets and have almost the suppliers lined up that, that we know trust and we've had products tested uh, for their nutritional compositions is really important for us. So I'd love to say we would just work with UK suppliers, but for some products, it, it just isn't. It's just not possible. And there's also the argument that, okay, maybe you just have a, a limited run where we just work with UK farmers, um, harvest the pumpkins, uh, grind and dry the pumpkins, uh, and we just sell it as a seasonal product. But I feel that that would do a disjustice to the many hundreds and, and thousands of customers that, that rely on it for the superpowers that it has within the digestive system. Yes. Well, yes. Superpowers. We're getting Halloween. Now, so <laughs> we well, are. We yeah. are. Yeah. So yeah. So pumpkin. It is amazing, isn't it? I mean, it is a prebiotic. But what I think is so wonderful about it for upset tummies is that it's got a massive high moisture content. So you're talking yeah. about moisture. I mean, would you say to rehydrate the pumpkin might make it a little bit more hydrational? <laughs> made that word. Yeah. Up. Yeah. For, for for sure. And I think it's a, it's a prime example of again. It's it's in a powdered format, so you as the 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 parent can can choose how you want to serve, how how you want to give that that um, that that ingredient. And I think a, a huge a huge way that many of our customers use it is on enrichment toys, rehydrating it ever so slightly to turn it into a paste, and then adding it to let's say a licky mat or some form of enrichment equipment. Yeah. Yeah. So I definitely say it's it's one of the most favorable ways to do it. But to be honest. For Winnie's example, we just simply add it to her raw uh, her raw meals as a topper because raw food is is typically is higher in moisture content compared yeah, to, yeah. to dry foods. Of course, but at the same time, <laughs> you, you can also make we quite regularly make pup shakes. So we might make what we call a, a firm up pup shake, which is literally using the goat's milk as the as the backing of that of that drink, and then adding pumpkin pumpkin powder to it. Uh, to turn it into what we've coined as the the firm up pup shake. <laughs> really good idea. No, you see, brilliant. I mean, things like this weren't really available, you know, till well, perhaps you came along a year ago. So exactly. it's um it's really lovely to see all of this happening, you know, because it is really highlighting you know not only dogs as being part of the family, but an awareness of you know their 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 physical, their emotional, and their mental health as well, and how to really allow that to thrive in the face of you know a lot of other things um vaccines over medication yeah, you know exactly. overly processed foods you know pollution uh, even cleaning products in the home yeah. can all sort of little by little you know of flea treatments wormers brewer can chip 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 away yeah at that at that important thing called you know the body burden and we've yeah. all got one and when the burden gets too heavy that's when disease potentially sets in and it's insidious and um, yeah. you know at times that's that's the thing you know you, we all hear about that moment where you you know you feed your old dog breakfast one morning and they don't eat and it's like yeah. red alert red yeah. alert but now you know through awareness and you know, lots of great people for for decades campaigning and and the field of nutrition also yeah. changing you know which it does pretty much on a daily basis yeah for sure um but also you know and i think a lot more education about what dogs should eat you know as we are what we eat yeah well this is this is the huge thing isn't it it's the same exactly the same as as being human you, you it's almost you are what you eat and inputs inputs equals outputs right especially in the world of of our dogs where we judge the health of our of our dogs by their output so it's more so a case of 
understanding what goes into the inputs and if you control better inputs you control better outputs yeah, um, yeah absolutely. so i think i when it comes to when it comes to i think just the, again going back to single whole food and human grade ingredients it's we try not to make it scary for people which is why it's it's more about not just adding as a as a powder or not just you know rehydrating it into a liquid it's you know we've got many customers that i know i know it's a bit go, goes a bit far but that bake with our products so you know you make make biscuits or make uh, cookies or make you know obviously with dog safe ingredients or, or cat safe ingredients in this in this instance but yes. that's that's an area we're trying to really add more information to especially on our website just building recipe cards that show our customers that hey actually you don't need to just add it to meal times you can you can use it in this this variety of different ways that can can make it almost another bonding exercise between between pet and parent if you like um yeah giving, giving them also, confidence absolutely but also you know i'd imagine with goat's milk particularly and, and, and more of it is uh, for humans i would imagine this is all totally safe for a human to consume um yep. so rather you know if you've got a dairy allergy or you know whatever you need goat's milk because you can't always get it in the supermarket exactly that's the other thing actually to be honest or they sell yeah. out quickly so to have it reconstitutable then yep. that's great for, for people as well in, tea, in, tea time tea time with your with your pup and parent i think mm, <laughs> oh, it's tea. really brilliant no oh, i love the idea of lots of recipes as well because it's fun and interactive and when you're doing a whole baking experience with your dog you know, yeah it's a whole for me with my you know behavior hat on you train lots of boundaries around the kitchen space you yep. know which turns into a fun game and so it's yep. like you know management so you're preparing for say christmas day when the kitchen might get super hectic and you don't want to trip up over your dog when you're holding the turkey yeah. and it's back you know what I mean so yeah. all of that's really important as well and then the dogs get a lovely biscuit so I think um I'm loving Fettle and I say I love the name it's um I'm glad yeah it's great it's really really good now with the seaweed as I do believe the UK shores has got a lot, well, up in Scotland anyway, there's loads of seaweed, but I don't know. Is that right? Exactly. Well, you are right. So when we first started, again, you go through this whole process of, of finding the best suppliers that, that deliver what we wanted to deliver from a, from a nutritional perspective. Right. And for those that do or don't know, seaweed is a, a, a fantastic natural dental aid um not only for dental for fresher breath and helping with plaque and tartar removal and things yeah, like that but and it absorbs um, exactly free radicals um, exactly well there's so many types of seaweed i mean i was amazed i mean there's thousands of different types of seaweed they're all incredibly difficult to pronounce and understand so i won't yeah, i won't no, even no, attempt to, to pronounce no, no, no. it <laughs> no but no it's true though so i mean i don't know just briefly i mean how many do you have one type of seaweed in there right i mean it's we, we have one from one, seaweed oh yes so Many so it's almost uh, the the strain of seaweed is is kelp, but the form of kelp has its own has its own category or class, if you will. So I will pull it up and I'll have to send it to you after because it's a nice long name to pronounce. Right. Um, okay. <laughs> but but de depending on the shores that you're obviously harvesting the the seaweed from, will have different. Um, different characteristics depending on the lifestyle it's lived and almost you know yeah but all the can I different... just say I mean how do you feel about the sea it's something I was only saying yesterday you see I, I don't eat fish anymore because of the sea I do go for a pickled herring that's my Scandinavian background I try and eat a lot of that actually yeah. for health reasons but yeah I mean I think it's a great fish. question. I just can't. I watch this panorama. I talk about it a lot, but it it haunts me. I There's watch a... the same on um, oh. on, Net on, on Netflix. I, well, I didn't watch it on Netflix. I watched it on the BBC. I'm so old fashioned. Yeah. It was a while ago, <laughs> but it was it was well, yeah, it was. I, gosh, I think in Scotland, um, and it was a, a fish farm, salmon and, farm, yeah, salmon farm, yeah, yeah. and it was. Um, really awful. Yeah, um, I, know I used exactly to have a fish about. tank. You know, I had a fish tank for many, many years, and they have they don't just have a one minute memory. I mean, come no. on. And so I, since then, that was it. I've never been able, you know, because mostly it's farmed. So yeah. never in a restaurant will I eat salmon. Never buy it, obviously. Never feed a salmon flavor, which I hate the word flavor variety. Yeah. What's salmon flavor? For heaven's sake. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, uh, you know, and of course research has moved on so much yeah. to you know debunk any true value in fish oil 
Um, We've put a nice it. blog up on our website around around fish oil, so it's it's oh, well worth. Did you? It's well, well done. It's, it's no, well I worth people reading, I think, actually, because like you, like you and I have learned, I think, from from watching the documentaries, and you've got to be careful, I think, of of where of of who the source is, because there's always what I like to refer to as puppet masters that control the show of what you're what you're fed or what you're supposed to feed, what you're su- supposed to know about. So I think digging deep into the resources of each of said problem, let's say, is, is a very interesting conversation to understand, is this subjective or objective? And that will give you, I think, a good idea of how, how, how um, genuine is this problem. And I think that's where we've kind of come up with this, um, this article around uh, fish oil in particular, which I think is probably well worth a read for perhaps your listeners, um, which, yeah, is, which is no, quite I'm interesting seeing... around the topic. Um, but, I but mean, it's on... it's quite known out there now. I think um, yeah. on the fish oil uh, front, yeah. Particularly if you have an interest, well, that said actually recommend <laughs> alternatives the whole time actually to yeah. clients. So having said, it's well known. I, I perhaps it's, it's, it's only if you're in the know. Maybe if you're in, I, I think it's very much if you're in the know, you know. <laughs> if you're yeah. not, I still feel almost how much of a need do you need? How much of a need do you need to understand? Yes. why you're feeding said thing and what yeah. the benefit is and what how much do you care personally around mm. the process behind that exactly so okay so if we think algae oil which is fairly you know on trend at the moment yeah and and for a good reason it's obviously the, the fish eat the algae yeah. to then uh, metabolize the uh, omega-3 but yeah. um with seaweed is it like an algae i mean can you get omega-3 from it yes you can and it all comes. So going back to the question of how do you feel about it, the the kind of sustainability side. So we started off sourcing a different strain of of kelp seaweed from Canada when we first started the business. Um, various reasons. It ticked it ticked a lot of the boxes nutritionally. Um, had the omega three in. You know, it's very it's great for um, supporting pigmentation, so it helps skin and coat health and things like that too. Um, but we wanted to again bring that closer to home which is where we found a, a very good supplier up in up in scotland that um i say almost batch farms it's it's such a, a fine not finite it's it's such an um ample supply and very rich in in scotland that you almost you have to understand more about the the areas it's being it's it's being taken yeah from. no of course and um you know i think around i thought well i don't know around that area i <laughs> so i um, you know i think um and seaweed you know it grows kind of where a lot of kind of fish don't go i mean it's quite dense Precisely. i mean sometimes Precisely. it's like a forest isn't it yeah. i mean it covers the seabed thickly to enable fish to have places to live and hide Precisely. and all of the crabs and so on i mean it's it's like an underworld it's like it is you know that what's that disney song you know life under the sea it it really yeah. is that it's um yeah and in some cases i think it's seen as a like like anything like the coral reef it's it's an environment for for life and as long as you're careful around how frequently you know our, our, our suppliers over there they don't do a um i guess a, a run every day it's more a case of once there is enough resource for us to then go and do a um a harvest then we do a harvest so again that can mean we have to be careful with our supply chain and make sure that we're we're taking as much as we can at a time that makes sense of when there has been a harvest um but again like our other our other ingredients we make sure we do have some backups available in case we do need a top up um mm-hmm. in in various different areas because like you you know we're we're, we're acutely aware of acutely aware of where of where we're sourcing ingredients and the process behind them so the guys that we work with are, are really great um and we do want to go and do almost our own mini documentary to go up and 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 visit them and, and document the journey of what it looks like and when we go for a harvest and how Gosh, that looks do some, will you do some underwater filming i'd love to yeah well, that, to, that would be great scuba you know. diving yeah 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 so okay so right so okay so the seaweed so is it is it freeze dried is it just air dried and then ground up or... it's, it's just dried it is right. it's just ground and uh, it's just dried and ground so nothing and nothing else happens to it nothing the same, else so the, no the, heat the so... same yeah the same as pumpkin 
right. Okay. Yep. 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 Because Air drying, you, think... you see, is such a simple way of processing. Yeah. Again, you know, cause, you know, my Scandinavian background, you know, uh, they air dry everything, reindeer yeah. meat, you know. Yeah. So everything is is done like that. So obviously that was to do with the climate, you know, for exactly. most of the year. You couldn't get anywhere because of the snow. I mean, it's not the same anymore. I mean, God, they yeah. don't get as much snow. I mean, it's all very worrying. However, yeah. so could you really say that there is a pokey dose of omega-3 in your seaweed? Yeah. Have you tested it or anything? Or It's just yeah. interesting to me because I really feel there is way too much omega-6 everywhere. And omega-6 in too much quantity is uh, pro-inflammatory, you know. So for me at the moment, it's just, I'm a, you know, I have my fads, if you like. And one of my fads at the moment is omega-3, only because... Well, I only learned relatively recently how many cows actually aren't finished on grass. So interesting. Mm, yeah, because that means their meat, which should be omega three heavy, isn't. Isn't. You know. Yeah. Interesting. And, and that you know, la sheep are better because they tend to be farmed on hillsides yeah. and all the rest of yeah. it. Anyway, we sort of digress. I wasn't aware of but that. yeah, yes, yes, so, and even some mm, cows that are marketed as being grass fed because that's the but yes well they're finished they are for some of their life so they're not exactly lying is that but specifically so, for the UK then or is it I think it's for everywhere but it definitely happens in the it's to do with the fattening process apparently oh it's gross yeah. before they get killed you know I mean listen I don't really eat a meat really yeah. I never you know rarely perhaps in a restaurant that's you know but rarely 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 however there's no way in a million years I will stop my my animals from eating meat yeah. but it does make you even more conscious of sourcing again not all raw you see everyone says oh, it's raw you yeah know, but raw varies a lot particularly at the yeah. moment I mean way yeah. back when there were only three suppliers of raw in this country it was a different kettle of fish you know but yeah. uh now it's uh it's 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 so big the raw market I mean it's brilliant on the one hand for me because that's where I'm at but arguably you know for someone going in trying to find a good raw brand it's not as straightforward as as you might think yeah mm, that's, it's that's interesting, interesting. So yeah, it is actually. <laughs> yeah. Go, going um, back to your question on the, on um, the omega threes in in, in yes, our kelp seaweed. Yes. So what what we are doing more so now is as soon so for for nutritional purposes or nutritional composition on on packaging to display as much information as possible around obviously what the ingredient is and what the nutritional composition is. So what we want to be able to do as we're improving our supply chain and we we need to be doing it. Um, as frequently as we can that makes sense to test each batch of raw ingredient that comes in is is actually drill further down into these different categories of benefits. So I think what I've made a note of is to actually go to our lab and send another sample off to, to actually go into the Omega-3 to see I think it could be a massive selling point for Ag you. Agreed. You know, not the based on what you've just told me. Yeah. Well, you know, it, um it certainly is something, and I'm very aware with it with with my own animals. I mean, they've they've been really you know well looked after, but you know over the years. And um, but uh, it's interesting. It's interesting to me this omega three, particularly with canine dementia, arguably more common now. So that's a way of helping to mitigate all sorts, just keeping dogs in you know optimum wellness. Really, well, it's but, it, it, exactly, and that, again, <laughs> excuse the pun, but just keeping dogs in fine I, fettle, I think, I, is how be, <laughs> is how we see it. <laughs> Oh, that's how I was going to finish the episode. <laughs> I've <laughs> stolen your glory there. You have, you have, Alex. Oh my gosh! But no, it's all very exciting. It's all really interesting. But obviously, you know, you're talking to the converted here. Um, I'm very interested in in ingredients and an awareness of and the nutrients within um, for optimum wellness. Um, whilst underlining <laughs> always that dogs are carnivores, but yes. adding some and and obviously goat's milk is carnivorous. But you know, ultimately ultimately the rest should be about 10 percent of their daily diet unless there is an issue where you can load in the pumpkin a bit more for an upset tummy but uh, precisely you know we um we mustn't begin to think that uh dogs are vegetarians right? yeah Ag agreed agreed um, oh well, alex no amazing well look no this is great well um are you going to be at the london vet show asking a bold question so it's been on my radar um, I will likely be there as me, 
exhibiting oh. likely not no um, no we'll do swing by the edition dog stand when um, okay, anyone yeah. else listening um that might be at the show i'm going to be on the edition dog stand actually great. as they're exhibiting there obviously so yes so it'd be really nice to see some great friendly faces yes definitely. swing by <laughs> i shall i shall um, and what do you think's on the highlights you know for, um if you can reveal anything for next year so uh, I can't remember if we touched on this earlier, but I'll say it again. Um, we're, we're launching our very first blended product. No, so, you didn't mention it. I just didn't, don't think you did. So <laughs> what that be, So our, our way around product development has very much been a case of don't create a product for the sake of creating a, a product. Create something that actually serves a purpose and has a, has a benefit and can be baked into a routine and a habit. Yeah. So the next big one for us, which has been in development for probably six months or so is our first blend and what that means is we are we've we found uh, and the recipe will include five whole food ingredients as opposed to just one that's been in any of our other products and we are going uh, we're creating our very first joint supplement so based on what i've seen in the world or in the marketplace i don't believe there is a joint supplement that exists that is 100% whole food so each one of the ingredients that we have is a whole okay. food. That's a whole food. Okay. But it will have been dehydrated. Yes. Okay. Okay. No, no. Um, so yes, no, put it this way. In, in, instead of using glucosamine, um, it'll be a whole food that, that delivers or has glucosamine. in. So we, when we move into our new factory, um, which will be hopefully early, early next year, we've got a, buy a couple of bits of equipment and then we are hoping to get that product live and into the market um by the end of by the end of q1 we've said so we're incredibly incredibly excited about that one yes well look you know um one in three dogs suffers from osteoarthritis we all know that's again down to inflammation yep. wear and tear and so on and lifestyle as well slippy floors being a, a main uh red alert there you know whenever i go into someone's home um the first thing i always see is the slippy floor so i go in and give a caveat going right well i don't want you all to hate me at the get-go but i am going to have a bit of a nag about your floors why what's wrong <laughs> with them I go, well, they all need to be covered. You need to invest in lots of runners. Oh, no. <laughs> Why? Yeah. And I explain. And being sure under the foot for dogs. So anyone yeah. listening, you know, the big top tip so simple is invest in some runners so that yeah. your dog will gravitate to that texture because dogs need to feel secure underfoot. So it actually can help with anxiety too. But of course, with their, their confirmation, because every day slipping and sliding, even little minute slips and skids will um, impact over time to their confirmation yes. and come back to bite you. So that's one, you know, logistical tip that um, everyone can just, you know, do quite easily so because it's like walking on ice you know I mean I hate walking on ice um, <laughs> uh, and um and you know you stiffen up and all of that and um and that if you did that every day a lot you'd be walking like a penguin wouldn't you, you know? yeah <laughs> yeah but that's why they do it um but no so that sounds exciting so yes I feel there's um definitely a market there as well and to uh you know again balance some of the negative effects of overly processed food Alex I'm allowed to say that because it's my podcast <laughs> <laughs> oh there you go then <laughs> there you okay. go <laughs> fantastic well listen I'm really excited to uh follow you know what you're doing and thank you very much for joining us today that's our show Mr Binks and what did you think? Yes, I thought you'd be interested in trying out Fettel's pumpkin powder. And I think we're going to give you the goat's milk too. And you're right, it is time for Woof of the Week. <coughs> Supplements in the right proportion at the right life stage for your dog can indeed be a very valuable addition to your daily diet routine. 
Well, I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, go on, rate and review the show wherever you tune into your podcasts, because it really makes a big difference. <laughs> Thanks again to Alex Taylor Grout from Fettle for joining us today. And all the links are in the show notes. Thanks, of course, to Mike Hansen, my producer, for all the music and production as ever. What's that, Mr. Binks? Yes, you're right. We will be back in your feed next Sunday. So why don't you subscribe now? It's free. And that way you'll never miss another show. Bye for now.